and welcome back to another episode of The Writer's Hive, where we talk bi-weekly about the writing and publishing process in the hopes of demystifying it and creating a writer's hive mind with you. Today, we're going to be discussing Scrivener. It is a writing software used by a lot of authors. It is by no way the only writing software, nor is it a necessity for writers. However, with the end of Nano comes the coveted discount code for, I believe, half off of your Scrivener purchase. So I know a lot of people are going to be trying it out and possibly purchasing it. So we wanted to share our favorite things about Scrivener in today's episode to kind of give you a preview of what you can expect if you go ahead and grab that as a part of your winner's package for NaNoWriMo. Amber, do you want to start us off with how you utilize Scrivener? Absolutely. I mean, I write in it, of course, but I also use a few of the features. I I use the outliner feature that they have where you can actually see the whole book kind of in like old school outline form where it's like, you know, one, two, three. And then you have other stuff you can add there, which we'll talk about uh, later. But I also use the corkboard feature because there's a piece whenever you're writing in a text file, you can put a synopsis on the top right hand corner. And in that synopsis, if you go to the corkboard feature, it shows it as little like three by five index cards on a cork board and I can actually see act by act. I can break it down and see exactly what I have outlined for or already written, whichever way you look at it. Do you utilize templates a lot? I create, I created, I believe two different templates. I Both are based off of Save the Cat, but one is separated by Save the Cat acts. So it's, it's named and it's just scenes. It doesn't have chapters so you can put it in chapters after or I have one that's actually separated into the piece but then also into chapters and it kind of evens it out so that it's easier to do chapters so I have two different ones that I use so we're going to be sharing those templates down below I will also share a how to install guide kind of a thing for anybody that's new to Scrivener it is a little bit tricky to find the place to upload it but Once you find it, it's really easy to use it each time. And the compile feature, they actually have where you can compile it as an outline. So it takes those synopsis and it puts it in an outline format that you can print out on paper and look at. And I have used that in the past and actually printed it on paper so that I can highlight it, write notes, mark it out when I've written it, and I I can exactly see what I have coming. Those are probably the main features that I use. Once I'm drafting, I feel like I use the color coding that I can just code it as like, it's red, that means I've written that chapter and I can easily see like which ones. And if I have multiple POVs, I can give them their own color, things like that. But that's mostly what I use it for. For me, I tend to use Scrivener in the outlining and the first sort of draft process. Um, I draft, I name my drafts a little differently. I usually do a a skeleton draft um, and also a first draft. So I will do that in Scrivener. When it comes to the, the software as a whole, I really love how I have everything in one place. I don't like when I have to be in a Uh, document writing, and then I have to flip to something else, find a folder, find a file, find a notebook. I just like having everything in one spot so I can quickly click to where I need to go. So I will do an outline. So I will do my Save the Cat outline, and I will also incorporate the Mastering Suspense Structure and Plot Roadmap. So I'll do that in the research section. I don't count that as word count. So then I have everything there. At that point, what I will do is I will make a chapter outline from the Save the Cat Mastering Suspense Structure and Plot. And I'll do that in another document. I won't separate the chapters uh, in the draft section yet. So once I have broken them all down into chapters, I will uh, sort of do what Amber mentioned about putting each chapter into its own uh, index card at the top right, which I don't tend to reference it after that. Um, I'll just leave it at the top. I don't put it in a corkboard or anything. And then after that, I will draft. Um, A few things that I do to track progress is, um, especially with my skeleton drafts, I like to just get through them as quickly as possible, get all the plot points down that I know. And then during the first draft, I will fill in the gaps. So what I like to use are label colors. For instance, I'll do like unfinished. If I have to skip something finished, I'll do a different color for that. Then when I start to go into the first draft, I'll have a different color for that so I can see my progress 
on the side. I'm a very visual person, so I really like having those colors show me my progress. Also, something that I like to do is, um, I heard this from someone a long time ago, and it really just sparked with me. So like I said, I like to have everything in Scrivener. At the very top of my manuscript, and this doesn't count toward word count, I have a in, in uh, all capital letters, it says read me. So these are where I put notes in as I'm writing. So I don't have to go anywhere else when I'm drafting. I really stay focused in the, the mood of the story. Any notes that I have and say like, I need to name this character or this thing should ha have happened earlier to fill in this thread. And I usually keep that as, as my notes. The reason I have it in all caps is because I like to review it before every writing session to make sure that I'm on track. And if there's anything new I want to add or... For instance, if I wanted to get rid of a plot point that I thought I wanted to put in, I just delete that. So that's a reference for me to keep checking in, but it also keeps me very much into the program and I'm not going anywhere else to distract me. I like have I like having a separate document for uh, for each of my series. So what I will do is I will have, for instance, my Life After series is in one Scrivener document. And then as I go through the books, I will move them into the research section so I always have the book there, but um, and all of my notes and everything. So I'm not opening up different documents every time. I also do separate mostly my main characters, but I will um, make a list of all my characters because I tend to make all of my characters in the beginning have the same first letter <laughs> for some reason. Um, so I actually do put them in alphabetical order to see, you know, make sure I don't have too many C's or these or whatever. Um, that's just something, like I said, I'm very visual. Um, so I'll do that when it comes to, to characters. I love that. Uh, Scrivener is honestly, it's one of my favorite parts of the writing process in terms of prep for writing, because it does keep me so organized and focused and I don't have to go other places for it. I know there's people that can write in like Google Docs, but then I felt like I was still opening a whole bunch of different tabs to get to everything that I wanted to get to. That's honestly my favorite thing about Scrivener is how inclusive it is of everything that I need. So where Amber uses a synopsis on the right-hand side of the drafting, I use the notes down below to input pictures. And that will be of characters. It will be of settings. Um, I love using the templates for characters, settings, they have all of that already pre-built for you, but I have adapted and made my own template for characters, which I will have down below for you if you want to use that. Again, being a visual person, I'm able to have the pictures right at the side of my drafting. So I can see that right there. Um, I also tend to organize things by Save the Cat and by chapters, but then under each chapter, I actually have my outline for that particular chapter. So I break that down my outlines for a chapter tend to be like about a page long each. So it doesn't quite work for me on that little note card because I tend to go through each scene in that chapter and outline what I want it to look like. So one of the things that I like is that you can split screen and I can have my outline on one half of the screen and my draft on the other. And I can make sure I'm hitting all the points that I want to be hitting. I usually have the draft on the left and then any kind of notes, whether it's the outline, a phase structure, um, and maybe it's a list of familiars, whatever it is, uh, because I have built a world, I usually have very in-depth notes about what different things look like. So if you're writing something that's more high fantasy or something that has intricate world building, I'm able to have all those world building notes right in my document. And, and that's really, really important to me to have everything all in one place and cut down on any kind of distractions. I also love, because like Kate, I tend to have strange names kind of popping up left and right. Within Scrivener, there is a name generator. So if you were not sure what name you wanted to use and you just needed a placeholder name, they have that functionality within Scrivener. You don't have to go to Google. And also from a goal setting standpoint, I love that I can see my targets for the entire project and for that day. It will break that down for me and I'm able to see my progress as I write. It will break down the word count per scene or per, per chapter, however you have it structured in your outline as well as your manuscript as a whole. And that's really important for me because I can tend to get really wordy to make sure that my chapters are about the same word length. And then what I think is really convenient for people that are looking to self-publish is that you can export the document in the compile fact as an ebook, as a paperback, as a Word doc, as a PDF. However you need to export that, really they have it built in for you. 
And most of the time it meets standards. Like if you wanted to export from there and go right to like some kind of self pub software, it's not always perfect. You definitely have to look at it, but they kind of have some standards set for you when you go ahead to export. It makes it really convenient to also use that export function to have something that's pretty clean for a, a query. You know, it's already kind of set up in like a manuscript setup. You've got your title page. All the back and front matter is there in template form. So you can kind of keep track of whoever's helped you with your book. There's an acknowledgement tab, all these different things that you can use to kind of track and keep everything together so that you have like pretty much a full draft of a book when you export. You can use Pro Writing Aid directly through Scrivener as well. Like if you are somebody who uses Pro Writing Aid to edit your books, you can use it in Pro Writing Aid and it will actually change the Scrivener document as well if you wanted to edit that way. Um, eventually at some point, I usually export and just use Word to track changes with editors, but you can use Pro Writing for a self-edit that will change inside of your Scrivener. Um, and the two of those work really, really well together. Another function that I always use because I do multiple rounds of edits for myself is the snapshot feature. And that has become a lifesaver for me. That is at the end of like a first draft, I will take a snapshot, which is basically just a picture of that chapter and it will save. So if I ever mess something up or I want to look at what I wrote previously, you can revert back to a prior version of that chapter. Um, and the snapshots really are fantastic. And it does have a mobile app. I believe you have to pay separately for the mobile app version, but if you are somebody who writes on the go or wants to be able to access the story from a multiple, for multiple different devices, there is a mobile app. So much like your Google Docs go with you on your phone and everywhere else, you can technically use Scrivener everywhere else as well. Yes, I used to do this early on when kiddo was young because I was usually not able to be at my computer if I was, you know, rocking or breastfeeding or anything like that. So I would be on my phone typing out my story because that was when I was ghostwriting as well. So that's definitely helpful. It is an extra cost. If you have a long commute on a train or somewhere where you're not driving, you could write on the go like that. And it's definitely very functional. Um, I never really had issues using it other than I suppose having to go to each screen separately because it's a phone, it's not a computer, but um, it's definitely helpful for on the go writing. So you talked about the split screen feature which is a really great feature. And to note that just because it's split screen, you could put anything you want on either screen. Um, and so if you do have down in your characters, notes about the character that you wanna get right, you can have that on one screen. If you have pictures in your notes, you can put those on the screen. You can actually make the text full screen. So you see nothing else but your text so that it, no distractions of, you know, different notifications. Like, even I think mutes your notifications and everything whenever you go into Scrivener full screen, which another great thing is if you do get distracted by the internet, Scrivener works even if you turn your Wi-Fi off. Great to note if you're somebody that doesn't want to have, you know, the internet on. Google Docs, you have to be on the internet because it's on the internet. But I really enjoy a lot of the features that Julie talked about. I've never used the self-publishing compile features because I don't self-publish through Scrivener. <laughs> Like I, I just do, but the manuscript format does give industry standards. So it's it's the double space, the type of font, you know, the margins, everything is exactly how a, you know, a publisher would need your manuscript to look if they asked for it. So that is good to know too. And a lot of authors, you know, which I, I've spoken to and said they never use Scrivener because it's too much. Um, it's definitely a robust program um, and it takes a while to sort of figure out, um, you know, all the features and what you need. I know with the compile settings, I constantly still have to go to their blog to figure out how to compile. Uh, but usually I spend a lot of my time in Word after uh, my first few drafts. So definitely, you know, take down any resources we've talked about, any features that you may like, and sort of hone your own process. There's a ton of videos on YouTube. Um, it's definitely a great program. So if you did win NaNoWriMo or you have Scrivener and, and never used it or want to learn, just take it a little bit of time. Start off, you know, just writing in it and figuring out if you want to figure out labels or character templates. Um, you know, Julie and Amber have great, you know, templates that you can use. So just try it out. So just take a little bit of time because it's definitely a fantastic program that you can use for years to come and in many, many different ways um, in which you've seen, you know, us talk about. Right. And it's good to know, too, that I think if you get the half off coupon, it's like $25 and it's a lifetime. It's not like a monthly subscription. 
you can get it and then just slowly, because you can just make one text file and use it as if it's Word. And you're just writing your whole draft in one text if you wanted to, just the basics and then slowly. I agree. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things is that it is super customizable. There are a lot of options. And I know that there's functionality on there that I have not used in the seven, eight years that I've been using it. I am sure I'm not utilizing everything that there is to offer. I know I'm not, but I've, I'm using what works for me. And I think that that's like a really fantastic aspect is that it does exactly as much or as little as you want it to do. I have found it to be very, very beneficial. Is it necessary? 100% no. Is it helpful? 100% yes for me personally. If you are uh, coming down the home stretch, I think it's a great thing to check out. If you have any other specific questions about Scrivener that we might be able to answer, leave them in a comment down below and we'll, we'll happily try to help you out. The templates will be listed down below. We are actually going to create a, a living document that's going to grow as our episodes continue. So we will have a community Google Doc where we will have different folders for different resources. Definitely check out the Google Doc down below. Go ahead and give it a star and a favorite. We keep accessing that. We will mention anytime that we put something new on there. But in the meantime, question for the episode, anything that you want to know further about Scrivener or give us your tips and tricks. What part of Scrivener do you use the most that other people can learn from as they go into the program? That's going to be it for this episode. And we will see you in the next Writer's Hive. We will be. We will be. We will be. We're going to. Trust the process. Trust the process. Where will we be? Where will we be? Where will we be? Where will we be? No! <laughs> to chapters. Chapter. Fuck you, Julie. <laughs> it's her fault. Where is it? <laughs>